Jurassic World is a 2015 American science fiction adventure film, the fourth installment of the Jurassic Park film series, and the first film in the Jurassic World trilogy. It was directed by Colin Trevorrow, written by Derek Connolly and Trevorrow, produced by Frank Marshall and Patrick Crowley, and stars Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, Vincent D'Onofrio, Ty Simpkins, Nick Robinson, Omar C., B.D. Wong, and Irfan Khan. Set 22 years after the events of Jurassic Park, Jurassic World takes place on the same fictional Central American island of Isla Nublar, which is located off the Pacific coast of Costa Rica, where a theme park of cloned dinosaurs has operated for nearly a decade. The park plunges into chaos when a genetically engineered dinosaur escapes from its enclosure and goes on a rampage. Universal Pictures intended to begin production of a fourth Jurassic Park film in 2004 for a mid-2005 release but became trapped in development hell for almost a decade due to script revisions. Following a suggestion from Spielberg, writers Rick Jaffer and Amanda Silver explored the idea of a functional dinosaur park. Once Trevorrow was hired as director in 2013, he followed the same idea while developing a new script with Derek Connolly. Filming lasted from April to August 2014 in Louisiana and at the original Jurassic Park locations in Hawaii. The dinosaurs were created by Industrial Light and Magic using CGI and by Legacy Effects using life-sized animatronics. Jurassic World was released in over 60 countries beginning on June 10, 2015. The film earned positive reviews from critics, who praised the performances, action sequences, film's score, and visuals. After an over $500 million record-breaking opening weekend, Jurassic World generated $1.6 billion in box office revenue, ranking sixth among the highest-grossing films of all time. It was also the second-highest-grossing film of 2015 and the highest-grossing in the franchise. Furthermore, it is the highest grossing film ever released by Universal Pictures unadjusted for inflation. A sequel titled Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom was released in June 2018. A cartoon series based on the film is scheduled for a 2020 release on Netflix. Topic. Plot Teenage brothers Zack and Gray Mitchell visit Jurassic World, a dinosaur theme park at the original Jurassic Park site on Isla Nublar. Their aunt, Claire Deering, is the operations manager. Claire assigns her assistant, Zara, as the boy's guide but they soon evade her. Elsewhere on the island, U.S. Navy veteran and ethologist Owen Grady has been training and researching four velociraptors. Based on the raptor's ability to follow commands, Vic Hoskins, the head of Ingen Security, believes the animals can be weaponized, an idea Owen and his assistant Barry strongly oppose. Prior to its opening, Claire and park owner Simon Masrani inspect the park's newest attraction, Indominus Rex, a genetically engineered dinosaur created by geneticist Dr. Henry Wu. Masrani tasks Owen with evaluating the enclosure. Owen warns Claire the Indominus lacks social skills, making it more dangerous and unpredictable. When it appears the Indominus has escaped, Owen and two park workers enter the enclosure. The Indominus, which can camouflage itself and mask its heat signature, suddenly appears. Owen survives the attack, but it kills the other two men before escaping into the island's interior. Owen tells Masrani to have the Indominus killed, to protect his company's investment. Masrani instead dispatches a specialized unit to subdue it with non lethal weaponry. After most of the unit is wiped out, Claire orders the evacuation of the island's northern sector. While exploring the park in a vehicle, Zack and Gray enter a restricted area. The Indominus arrives and destroys the vehicle. The boys escape and come upon the ruins of the original Jurassic Park facility where they repair an old Jeep Wrangler and drive back to the park resort. As Claire and Owen search for the boys, they barely escape the Indominus. Masrani and two troopers hunt the Indominus by helicopter but it breaks into the park's aviary, releasing pterosaurs, pteranodon and dimorphodon species, which collide with the helicopter, causing it to crash. 
The pterosaurs then attack the resort. In the chaos, Zara is carried off by pterosaurs before being devoured by the park's Mosasaurus. Claire and Owen find Zack and Gray as armed personnel shoot down swarming pterosaurs. Assuming command after Masrani's death, Hoskins orders that the raptors be used to track the Indominus. Owen, forced to comply, leads the raptors. They find the Indominus and the animals begin communicating among themselves. Owen realizes the Indominus has Velociraptor DNA, it becomes the pack's new alpha, usurping Owen's dominance. Troops fire on the Indominus but it escapes. The raptors kill most of the troops, but one raptor is killed. Hoskins evacuates Wu and the dinosaur embryos from the island to protect Wu's research. Owen, Claire, and the boys find Hoskins at the lab but a raptor breaks in and kills him. Owen re-establishes his bond with the three raptors before the Indominus reappears. They attack the Indominus but two are killed. Claire releases the park's Tyrannosaurus Rex and lures it into a battle with the Indominus, which overpowers the T-Rex until Blue, the surviving raptor, joins the fight. Overwhelmed, the Indominus is cornered at the lagoon's edge, where the Mosasaurus drags it underwater. The survivors are evacuated and the island is abandoned. Zack and Gray are reunited with their parents, Owen and Claire decide to stay together. Topic. Cast Chris Pratt as Owen Grady, a Navy veteran and ethologist, and a velociraptor expert and handler at Jurassic World. Bryce Dallas Howard as Claire Deering, the Jurassic World operations manager. Aunt to Zach and Gray Mitchell. Vincent D'Onofrio as Vic Hoskins, head of England's security operations, who wants to use the Velociraptors and the Indominus Rex as military animals. Ty Simpkins as Gray Mitchell, one of Claire's nephews and the younger brother of Zach. Nick Robinson as Zach Mitchell, one of Claire's nephews and the older brother of Gray. Omar C. as Barry, Owen's assistant who helps care for the raptors. B.D. Wong as Dr. Henry Wu, a geneticist who heads the team that created the dinosaurs for Jurassic World. He is revealed to have an alliance with Hoskins. Wong is the only actor in the film to reprise his role from any of the previous movies. Irfan Khan as Simon Masrani, CEO of the Masrani Corporation and the owner of Jurassic World. Jake Johnson as Lowry Crothers, an employee in the park's control room. Lauren Lapkus as Vivian, an employee in the park's control room. Brian T. as Harmada, the leader of the ACU Asset Containment Unit, a group of security guards installed on Isla Nublar. Katie McGrath as Zara, Claire's personal assistant. Judy Greer as Karen Mitchell, Claire's sister and mother of Zach and Gray. Andy Buckley as Scott Mitchell, Karen's husband and father of Zack and Gray. Additionally, Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Buffett cameo as themselves. Patrick Crowley, the film's producer, cameos as Masrani's flight instructor while Colin Trevorrow briefly provides the voice of Mr. DNA, an animated DNA helix who explains the park's technology to visitors. The character was previously voiced by Greg Burson in Jurassic Park. Brad Bird provides a voice cameo as the park's monorail announcer and Jack Horner, the film's technical advisor, also cameos. Topic. Themes and analysis Director Colin Trevorrow stated that the Indominus Rex, the synthetic hybrid dinosaur at the center of the film's story, is symbolic of consumer and corporate excess. The dinosaur was meant to embody humanity's worst tendencies. We're surrounded by wonder and yet we want more, and we want it bigger, faster, louder, better. And in the world of the movie, the animal is designed based on a series of corporate focus groups. He also stated, There's something in the film about our greed and our desire for profit. The Indominus Rex, to me, is very much that desire, that need to be satisfied. 
Film journalists have noted parallels between the workings of the park in Jurassic World and of the film and entertainment industry. Actor James Dumont said, The person and the environment are one is an obvious theme. Another theme is, Those who do not stop evil are supporting and encouraging it. The film also explores the concept of raising an animal in a particular way. The Indominus Rex was raised in captivity in complete isolation making the creature not fully functional topic production topic development In March 2001, Jurassic Park the third director Joe Johnston said he and executive producer Steven Spielberg had discussed a story idea for a fourth Jurassic Park film, which Johnston was not interested in directing. In May 2001, Spielberg had Amblin Entertainment commence development of ideas for Jurassic Park the fourth, which he planned to produce. Late in Jurassic Park the Third's production, Spielberg devised a story idea he believed should have been used for the third film. In June 2001, Johnston announced he would not direct the film and that Spielberg had a story idea that would extend the series' mythology. Johnston said the film would feel like a departure from the previous films, implying it would not be set on an island. Johnston also said it would not involve the Pteranodons from the ending of Jurassic Park the Third. then later hinted it would. Actor Sam Neill, who portrayed Dr. Alan Grant in two previous films in the series, said he could not imagine a way for his character to be involved in another film. Neill was contracted for three films, other actors from Jurassic Park the Third were also contracted for a potential fourth film. In April 2002, it was reported that the fourth Jurassic Park film would be the last in the series and that it would ignore events portrayed in its predecessor. In June 2002, Spielberg confirmed plans for a fourth film, which he hoped Johnston would direct. Spielberg also said he considered a story idea for the film was the best one since the first film. In November 2002, Neil said there was a chance he would appear in the film, while William Monaghan was announced as the screenwriter, with Spielberg as executive producer and Kathleen Kennedy as producer. A month later, the film was announced for a mid-2005 release. In January 2003, Jeff Goldblum said he had been asked to stay available for a possible return of his character Ian Malcolm. At the end of the month, it was reported the story would involve dinosaurs migrating to the Costa Rican mainland. A team of experts, including Alan Grant and Ian Malcolm, chart an expedition to an offshore island and discover the dinosaurs breeding freely. The plot would involve the characters devising a way to restrict the spread of the dinosaurs and prevent an ecological disaster. Early concept art depicted genetically engineered human dinosaur mercenaries. Stan Winston's special effects studio, which worked on the previous films, was in the design phase for the film as of April 2003. Winston said Spielberg wanted to adapt several unfilmed scenes from Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park novel and its sequel The Lost World. By July 2003, Kira Knightley was in consideration for two roles, including a small role as a granddaughter. Monaghan's first draft of the script was finished later that month. The story was not set in a jungle, as in previous films. Neil confirmed he would reprise his character. Filming was set to begin in 2004 in California and Hawaii. In September 2003, Richard Attenborough said he would reprise his role as John Hammond. The following month, paleontologist Jack Horner said he would return as technical advisor for the fourth film, hinting it would feature a velociraptor. He was later asked about a hypothetical idea of humans evolving from dinosaurs rather than mammals. Horner responded, Keep thinking about that, and in a couple of years go see Jurassic Park 4. Knightley's character was written out in late 2003. In March 2004, Johnston said he had not been asked to direct the film and hoped Spielberg would direct it. Johnston said a story that would take the series in a completely different direction. 
away from the island and away from the T-Rex and all this was being written. In April 2004, script doctors were being sought to work on the film's story, which involved dinosaurs being trained by the government to carry and use weapons in battles. As of May 2004, screenwriter John Sayles was writing the script, after being hired to finish earlier work done by Monaghan, who had left the project to work on Kingdom of Heaven, Sayles wrote two drafts for the film. In his first draft, Isla Nublar and Ingen have been taken over by Grendel Corporation, a Swiss holdings company, while creatures from the island have begun attacking people on the mainland of Central and North America. The script featured a brief return to Isla Nublar and would focus on a mercenary named Nick Harris, a new character who is sent by John Hammond to the island to retrieve a canister of dinosaur DNA that was lost during the events of the first film. With the DNA, Hammond intends to have his scientists create a new group of infertile dinosaurs that can kill the extant ones. Harris retrieves the canister but is kidnapped and taken to Grendel Corporation's headquarters in the Swiss Alps, where he is persuaded into helping the company train a team of genetically modified Danonychus and two Dilophosaurus for use on rescue missions and to combat drug dealers. The dinosaurs would be equipped with body armor and would use their teeth and claws as weapons. The script focused mostly on the efforts of Harris and a team of experts as they train the dinosaurs. Hammond would be the only returning character in this draft. The concept of a human who trains raptors came from Spielberg. By June 2004, Frank Marshall had joined the project as a producer while Alex Proyas was in discussions to direct, with filming expected to begin in March 2005 for a late 2005 release. Filming would begin at Pinewood Studios, where a massive tank was to be constructed for scenes involving marine reptiles. In July 2004, the script was being rewritten and Jeremy Piven and Emmy Rossum were being considered for two of the lead roles and Attenborough reprising his character. Later that month, Proyas said he was not interested in directing the film. In August 2004, Drew McQueenie of Ain't It Cool News published a review of Sales's initial draft, calling it well-written and inventive, but bugfuck crazy. Sales later confirmed this was an early draft of the script that had been intercepted through Spielberg's email by a hacker. In late August 2004, David Boreanaz was rumored and later reported to have the lead role, although he was actually in consideration for Fantastic Four. Sales was still rewriting the script in September 2004, with the film on track for a late 2005 release. In April 2005, Winston confirmed the film was on hold because of repeated revisions to the film's script, none of which satisfied Spielberg. According to Winston, he felt neither of the drafts balanced the science and adventure elements effectively. Too much science will make the movie too talky, but too much adventure will make it seem hollow. Progress on the film stalled during 2005 as Marshall and Spielberg were busy with other film projects. At the end of the year, Spielberg said he planned to include a scene inspired by Crichton's novel The Lost World that would involve characters on motorcycles as they flee from raptors. In January 2006, Johnston and Horner were working on a new screenplay, with filming expected to begin after the 2008 release of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. In February 2006, Marshall said the film now had a good script, with filming expected to begin in 2007 for a 2008 release. In March 2006, Marshall said the film had a script and was getting a director, Johnston was a possible candidate. In April 2006, Marshall said there was an idea for the film but no script. Marshall said Crichton would not write the script and that Spielberg would not direct it. The script was still being worked on in June 2006. The following month, Spielberg denied an internet rumor that Breck Eisner would direct, saying Johnston was standing by for the job. In December 2006, Laura Dern said she was open to reprising her role as Ellie Sattler but had not been contacted about appearing in the film. In March 2007, Neil said he knew nothing about the project. 
By April 2007, Dern had been contacted about appearing in the film, with filming expected to begin that year for release in 2008. By that time, Johnston no longer planned to direct the film. In December 2007, Marshall said further work on the script would begin at the end of the 2007-08 Writers Guild of America strike, with filming potentially starting in 2008 for a release in mid-2009. Horner's 2009 book, How to Build a Dinosaur, was originally planned for release at the same time as the film as a scientific companion volume. During 2008, Attenborough and Goldblum expressed interest in reprising their roles, although Attenborough suffered a fall at his home later that year and subsequently retired from acting. In a 2008 interview, Johnston discussed the possibility of Jurassic Park IV, stating that the film's story was completely different from that of its predecessors and would not be set on an island. Johnston also said the film would take the franchise into a new trilogy. In December 2008, a month after Crichton's death, Marshall and Kennedy said the planned fourth film in the sequence had been abandoned. In early 2010, Johnston said Jurassic Park the fourth would essentially be the beginning of a second Jurassic Park trilogy. Johnston also said the film would feature new characters and a story that did not involve a dinosaur theme park, and would not use the story from Sales's initial 2004 draft. Johnston hoped to further develop the project with Spielberg after they finished other projects, including Johnston's 2011 film, Captain America, The First Avenger. By June 15, 2011, Spielberg had met twice with writer Mark Protosevich to work on a story for a potential fourth Jurassic Park film. In July 2011, Johnston said he was in discussions about the fourth film, which was still planned as the start of a new trilogy. Later that month at the San Diego Comic-Con International, Spielberg said a writer was working on a treatment for the film, which he said might be released within the next two or three years. A representative of Universal said 2013 would be the preferred deadline for completion. Over the next three months, Mark Protosevich wrote two story treatments for the film. Spielberg had hoped to have a writer working on a full screenplay for Jurassic Park the fourth by October 2011. He and Kennedy felt neither of Protosevich's treatments had the right story for a fourth film. Despite this, Spielberg said in October 2011 that the script was being written by Protosevich, and that he felt the story they were working on was stronger than that of Jurassic Park the third. In December 2011, Kennedy said a script had not yet been written because story ideas were still being discussed. In January 2012, Kennedy said a story had been chosen and that work on the script would begin. That month, Spielberg said he would not direct the film but would produce it. In June 2012, it was announced that writers Rick Jaffer and Amanda Silver would be scripting Jurassic Park 4. Topic. Pre-production On January 11, 2013, Universal said the film would be made in 3D and released on June 13, 2014. In February, it was reported that Kathleen Kennedy would not be producing the film in favor of focusing on Star Wars, The Force Awakens for 2015. Frank Marshall took over as the primary producer. Shortly after, the director of studio operations at Rally Studios in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, confirmed that Universal Pictures had reserved space there from April to November 2013, without specifying the reason. Marshall was impressed with Colin Trevorrow's first film Safety Not Guaranteed and at the end of February 2013, he arranged a meeting between himself, Trevorrow and Spielberg regarding the Jurassic Park job. Trevorrow was subsequently hired without reading Jaffa and Silver's script, which was still being written. Universal announced Trevorrow as director on March 14, 2013, and Patrick Crowley as a producer. A year had been spent searching for a director. Spielberg, Marshall, and Kennedy had previously considered Juan Antonio Bayona to direct Jurassic World, but he declined because he felt there was not enough time for production. 
In April 2013, Jack Horner said a new, previously extinct creature would rise to stardom in the film. After reading Jaffa and Silver's draft, Trevorrow insisted on completely rewriting the script with writing partner Derek Connolly, who had never seen any of the Jurassic Park films prior to that point. Trevorrow had told the filmmakers, If I direct this screenplay, it's going to be a bad movie. I'm gonna do a bad job, because I just don't get it." Trevorrow and Connolly wrote their own draft of the script over a couple of weeks. The studio received the draft on May 6, 2013, and found the script changes more large-scale than anticipated. On May 8, 2013, the studio announced it was pushing the release from June 13, 2014, to an unspecified future date. Filming had been set to begin on June 24, 2013. Delaying the film allowed Trevorrow and Connolly more time to work on the script, as Spielberg felt that it needed improvement. Another reason for the delay was to allow time for the construction of practical sets for the fictional theme park. It was previously intended to add in these buildings using computer effects. In May 2013, Trevorrow tweeted a picture of Kauai taken during location scouting with the caption. Nubla, the name of the island in the original film. Later that month, Sam Neill said it was unlikely he would be a part of the film, stating, I'm told it's a big reboot, a total rejig. Trevorrow eventually tweeted that, Reboot is a strong word. This is a new sci fi terror adventure set 22 years after the horrific events of Jurassic Park. In June 2013, a new release date of 2015 was announced, and it was reported that the film would revolve around a fully functional dinosaur theme park. On September 10, 2013, Universal Pictures confirmed the film would be titled Jurassic World and would be released on June 12, 2015. Trevorrow chose to rename the film from its previous title, Jurassic Park IV, to differentiate it from previous films in the series. Trevorrow also said that within the story, if you named a theme park Jurassic Park after the disaster that had happened it would be a horrible PR mistake. By February 7, 2014, Legendary Pictures had agreed to co-finance the film, and provided about 20% of the budget. China Film Group has been reported as also having financed the film. Thomas Tull of Legendary Pictures served as executive producer for the film with Spielberg. Topic: Writing. Spielberg had three ideas he wanted Jaffa and Silver to incorporate into the script: a fully functioning dinosaur theme park, a human who has a relationship with trained raptors from Sales's earlier draft, and a human eating dinosaur that escapes and has to be stopped. Jaffa and Silver's draft, titled Jurassic Park the Fourth, included an opening scene set in China, where the fossilized remains of a new dinosaur species are discovered by a Chinese paleontologist. In the draft, the remains are stolen by a corporation with malicious intentions, leading the paleontologist and her two sons to visit Jurassic Park. Jaffa and Silver worked on the script for approximately a year, with input from Spielberg. After the film was delayed in May 2013, Trevorrow and Connolly continued rewriting the script and worked with Spielberg to perfect it. Throughout the writing period, Trevorrow, Connolly, and Spielberg discussed in meetings the film's story. David Kerp also met with Trevorrow and Connolly to advise them on the script. Kerp wrote the first two films in the series, he declined an offer to write the fourth film because he felt he had nothing left to contribute to the series. Trevorrow said perfecting the script was the hardest part because Jurassic Park films don't fit into a specific genre. The sci-fi adventures that also have to be funny, emotional and scary as hell. That takes a lot of construction, but it can't feel designed. To write the film's story, Trevorrow and Connolly discussed major news events that occurred in the past 20 years. Trevorrow said two main ideas emerged, the ill-advised pursuit of money leading to environmental disaster and the ubiquity of technology leading to ignorance and the taking for granted of scientific wonders. According to Trevorrow, 
W E takes so much for granted, we imagined a teenager texting his girlfriend with his back to a T-Rex behind protective glass. For us, that image captured the way much of the audience feels about the movies themselves. We've seen CG dinosaurs. What else you got? Trevorrow also said Jurassic World was inspired by a quotation from Ian Malcolm in the first film. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you patented it, and packaged it, and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now you wanna sell it." Trevorrow said the quotation from Malcolm inspired the large amount of product placement in the film. Trevorrow and Connolly retained Spielberg's three ideas, although Trevorrow felt the concept of trained raptors was, in its original form, too extreme and had to be pulled way, way, way back. A few months after being hired, Trevorrow read through each of the previous drafts for the film. Trevorrow said each of the previous drafts tried to do something different from the previous films in the series. Trevorrow called Sales's initial draft fascinating in a lot of ways. There were a lot of things I loved about it. It was properly bonkers. In a way, I aspired for our film, in its fearlessness and willingness, to go there. Trevorrow further stated that he was interested in what the sales script was trying to do because it was so daring. It was trying to set a tone for how far forward we needed to push. It took us too far forward with man's progressions with dinosaurs." Owen's relationship with raptors was inspired by real-life relationships between humans and dangerous animals such as lions and alligators. In their first appearance in the film, the raptors are ordered not to eat a live pig in their enclosure. Trevorrow said that this was as far as we should be able to go with the concept of trained raptors. Trevorrow's and Connolly's rewrite of the script introduced new characters. Trevorrow wrote the characters Hoskins, Masrani, and Wu, while Connolly wrote the children and female characters. In Jaffa and Silver's draft, the main character, who would become Owen, actively supported the militarization of the raptors from the beginning of the story. Trevorrow said, If anyone's gonna militarize raptors that's what the bad guy does, he's insane. Trevorrow's and Connolly's script redraft changed the story so viewers would first see the theme park from the perspective of a child. Trevorrow said one of his goals was for the child characters of Zack and Gray to not be annoying, and I think we pulled it off. Gray was initially written as a child with autism, a trait that was removed from the final draft. Trevorrow and Connolly did not want to include previous characters in the new film without a good reason for their return to the series. They considered Dr. Henry Wu, the scientist responsible for recreating dinosaurs, a logical choice. In the first novel, Henry Wu had a much larger role, which was trimmed down for the film adaptation. Trevorrow said that the characters Alan Grant, Ian Malcolm, and Ellie Sattler were not included in the script because I respect those actors too much to shoehorn them into this story for my own sentimental reasons. Jurassic Park isn't about the bad luck of three people who keep getting thrown into the same situation. The only reason they'd go back to that island is if the screenwriters contrived a reason for them to go. Trevorrow said viewers could feel nostalgia without having an actor reprise a role after so many years, which he believed might make you feel old and remind you that you're on a slow march towards death, like the rest of us. Initially, the film's new dinosaur was known as Malasaurus. In Jaffa's and Silver's draft, the new dinosaur, a non-existent species, was depicted as a real animal. Trevorrow made the dinosaur a genetically modified hybrid named Indominus Rex to maintain consistency with earlier films in the series, which had incorporated the latest paleontological discoveries, he said. I didn't want to make up a new dinosaur and tell kids it was real. Trevorrow said the idea of a hybrid dinosaur was not tremendously different from those in the first film, by adding frog DNA. It's the next level. 
In addition to the Indominus Rex, the earlier draft by Trevorrow and Connolly also included a second hybrid dinosaur named Stegoceratops, which is bred using DNA from Stegosaurus and Triceratops. Trevorrow removed the animal from the final script after his son persuaded him featuring multiple hybrids would make the Indominus unique. Trevorrow and Connolly shortened the raptor hunt for the park's new, escaped dinosaur, which in the Jaffa, Silver draft occupied the second half of the film. One scene, which was inspired by Crichton's novel The Lost World, involves Owen riding a motorcycle while his raptors race accompany him during their search for the Indominus. Spielberg had intended to include the scene as early as 2005, although his initial vision for the scene was more similar to its counterpart in the novel, in which humans on a motorcycle flee from raptors rather than cooperating with them. The Indominus's camouflage ability is also present in The Lost World, which features Carnotaurus with the same ability. According to Trevorrow, the film isn't a sequel or a reboot or a remake, it's all of those things in a strange way. He did not wish to make a carbon copy of Jurassic Park. Jurassic World features various references to Jurassic Park, and is considered a direct sequel to the first film. Trevorrow stated that the events of the previous two films were not relevant to the new film's story because they take place on a different island. He also said the events depicted in the film's predecessors are still canon in the film series. Trevorrow suggested the idea of including a Mosasaurus as part of a theme park feeding show in which park goers would watch from bleachers as the animal leaps out of a lagoon and catches its prey, a shark hanging above the water. Spielberg suggested lowering the bleachers afterwards to give park guests a view of the creature in its aquatic habitat. The theme park's ball-shaped gyrosphere rides were another of Spielberg's ideas. He approved Trevorrow's and Connolly's draft in September 2013. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Casting. Prior to the production delay in May 2013, actors Bryce Dallas Howard, David Oyelowo, and Garrett Hedlund had been considered for roles in the film. By August 15, 2013, John Krasinski was in talks for a role as a dinosaur tamer. In September 2013, Howard was in early negotiations for a role and was cast in early November. By mid-October, Ty Simpkins had been cast as the child lead, while Nick Robinson was cast as the older brother of Simpkins's character. Robinson and Simpkins had to perform a scream test before being cast. During mid-October, Jake Johnson was being considered for a role while Josh Brolin was in talks to play Owen. Brolin had been considered earlier but he was not offered the role and no final casting decision had been made. By mid-November 2013, Brolin was no longer in talks for the film and Chris Pratt was in negotiations for the role of Owen. By mid-January 2014, Pratt had been cast in the role. Trevorrow had been impressed by Pratt's acting in Zero Dark Thirty. In 2010, Pratt had joked that Spielberg had cast him in the film. Trevorrow said that when Pratt was cast, We had no idea he'd become as big a star as he has. I just cast a bunch of character actors, as all Jurassic Park movies have. And somehow we ended up with a movie star. Trevorrow considered Owen to be a combination of Alan Grant and Ian Malcolm. Pratt said about the character, He's got a little bit of the Goldblum cynicism but also the Sam Neill excitement at the wonder of the biology of it all, so it's a combination. Although Pratt received top billing in the cast, Trevorrow stated that Howard's character Claire is the lead character. Vincent D'Onofrio, Irfan Khan, and Omar C were cast in early 2014. Trevorrow had admired C's acting and wrote the character of Barry with him in mind for the role. Trevorrow also said he cast actors such as C because they were well known internationally, stating that, This is a global film and Jurassic Park doesn't belong to just America. In March 2014, Johnson confirmed he would have a role in the film. The same month, Trevorrow announced B.D. Wong would reprise his role as Dr. Henry Wu, stating that the character would have a more significant role than he did in the original film. 
A week before filming began, it was announced that Judy Greer, Katie McGrath and Lauren Lapkus had joined the cast. Over the next two months, it was announced Andy Buckley and James Dumont had joined the cast. Filming Principal photography began on April 10, 2014, at Hawaii's Honolulu Zoo, where an elephant paddock was used as a set for Jurassic World's petting zoo. Filming continued for four weeks on Oahu. Filming in Hawaii was limited to three hours on some days because of torrential rain. The 40-foot high Indominus paddock and the gyrosphere departure platform were built at Oahu's Kualoa Ranch. Both sets were left standing after production to become tourist attractions. Owen's motorcycle sequence with the Raptors was filmed along a dirt road at Kualoa Ranch, with computer-generated jungle foliage was added during post-production. Pratt crashed his motorcycle during filming, resulting in minor injuries. At the end of April, interior scenes were filmed at the Hawaii Convention Center. The film's ending, in which park guests are evacuated to an airplane hangar set up as a shelter, was filmed at the Pacific Aviation Museum Pearl Harbor on Ford Island. Filming moved to Kaui on May 15, 2014, and concluded there on June 6, 2014. Jurassic World was also shot in Louisiana to take advantage of the state's tax incentives, making it the first film in the series not to be shot at studios in Los Angeles. Filming was scheduled to remain in Louisiana for 11 weeks beginning in June 2014 at New Orleans's abandoned Six Flags New Orleans theme park, and continuing there for approximately two weeks. Jurassic World's main street and boardwalk, measuring 300 feet times 200 feet 91 meters times 61 meters, was constructed in Six Flags New Orleans parking lot, but the theme park itself was not used for filming. One of Main Street's restaurants is named Winston's after Stan Winston, who died in 2008. A statue of Attenborough's character John Hammond is also seen in the film. Although Goldblum did not reprise his role as Ian Malcolm, the character is twice shown in an image on a fictional book written by the character. Singer Jimmy Buffett, a friend of Marshall, has a brief, non speaking cameo appearance during the film's pterosaur attack sequence. A Margaritaville restaurant, part of a chain owned by Buffett, was constructed as part of Jurassic World's Main Street. It is destroyed during the battle between the T-Rex and the Indominus. Trevorrow based the pterosaur attack sequence on triptych paintings by Hieronymus Bosch that include details for their admirers to observe. Trevorrow said about the scene, I wanted to be able to step back and look at these tableaus of chaotic action and allow people who watch the movie over and over again to always see a different story as you look specifically at different parts of the frame. The sequence includes a scene in which Claire's assistant Zara McGrath is carried off by several pteranodons before falling into the park's lagoon, where she is eaten by the Mosasaurus, marking the first female death in the series. Trevorrow wanted to make it the most spectacular death we can possibly imagine, while also wanting to surprise moviegoers, stating, Let's have someone die who just doesn't deserve to die at all. McGrath performed her own stunts for the scene, which involved the fall and submersion into the park's lagoon. Most of the filming in New Orleans took place at Big Easy Studios inside NASA's Mashoud Assembly Facility Complex in East New Orleans. Interior scenes, including the visitor's center, control room and laboratories, were filmed at the Mashoud facility. Jack Horner helped design the educational displays in the Jurassic World Visitor Center. Approximately 200 extras, acting as park guests sitting on bleachers, were doused with water as part of a scene depicting the Mosasaurus feeding show, which was filmed on an outdoor set at the Mashoud facility. The raptor enclosure, an octagonal, 20 feet meters high outdoor structure, was also constructed at the Mashoud facility. One jungle scene was filmed on a soundstage in Louisiana, while the rest were filmed earlier in Hawaii. On June 30, 2014 Robinson, Simpkins and Greer filmed scenes at Louis Armstrong International Airport in New Orleans. 
In July 2014, fake snow was used in New Orleans for scenes that depict Zach and Gray's house in Wisconsin. An evacuation scene was filmed at Audubon Zoo in New Orleans, while swamp scenes were filmed in Slidell, Louisiana. Scroggins Aviation mock-up and effects was hired to fabricate and build the blue Eurocopter EC-130 T2 airframe body known as JW001 in the film, while 32TEN Studios created the automatic Jurassic World gates and various practical effects such as explosions. To aid in the design of the Jurassic World control room, Trevorrow and Crowley visited the control rooms at various Universal and Disney theme parks prior to filming. Trevorrow and Crowley were disappointed by the unexciting appearances of real-life control rooms and made the Jurassic World control room more elaborate than its real-life counterparts. The control room set included many television monitors displaying miscellaneous information, footage for the monitors was filmed in Hawaii and at the NASA facility, and some was also obtained from Universal Orlando. Production designers based parts of the control room set on the NASA facility's control room. During filming, Trevorrow confirmed reports that the story involved a functioning dinosaur theme park and a hybrid dinosaur. He was disappointed these details could not be kept secret until the film's release. During filming, the Indominus Rex was also known as Diabolus Rex, a name Trevorrow devised to maintain secrecy on the project. In contrast to the prevalence of digital cinematography in the 2010s, cinematographer John Schwartzman used Panavision cameras with a combination of Kodak 35mm and 65mm film stocks. One of the 65mm cameras used on the production was used in the filming of Stanley Kubrick's 2001, A Space Odyssey. The filmmakers chose to shoot Jurassic World on film stock, in addition to Spielberg's and Schwartzman's personal preference for the format, was to match the visual aesthetic of the previous three film shot Jurassic Park pictures, and because the film's exterior jungle scenes required a greater dynamic range of light than digital cameras could accommodate. Most of Jurassic World was made on 35mm film and large exteriors in Hawaii were shot using 65mm film, which was used for visual effect sequences and as location shots where the filmmakers wanted extra visual impact. The film is presented in a 2.00, one aspect ratio, an intermediate ratio that falls between the two industry standard widescreen aspect ratios of 1.85, 1 and 2.39, 1. This was chosen because it allowed enough height for humans and dinosaurs to fit into the same frame without giving up a sense of scope, and closely matches the ratio of digital IMAX screens. Schwartzman made extensive use of the Technocrane telescopic crane, which Crowley described as fitting for a thriller, being able to march into people, to get in closer and closer, as they realize that there's something out there. Tracking shots, particularly those that would serve as reference to the visual effects team, used a spider cam. The film was made under the working title Ebb Tide, which Spielberg chose before Trevorrow was hired. Spielberg did not visit the set, although he watched each day's footage at the end of each production day and sometimes advised Trevorrow on the filming of certain scenes. Filming wrapped on August 5, 2014, after 78 shooting days. Topic. Deleted scenes Trevorrow filmed two versions of many scenes so he could choose which version to use for the final film. One scene that was deleted from the final film featured a kiss between Vivian's and Lowry's characters. The scene was removed because the film already contained such a scene between Owen and Claire, Trevorrow said. I knew I could only pull off one kiss in this movie. A comedic scene featuring Howard's character and dinosaur feces, which is similar to Laura Dern's scene in the original Jurassic Park, was cut from the cinematic release. Another deleted scene occurs during the fight between the T-Rex and the Indominus, which initially would have been watched by park guests. Trevorrow chose not to include the scene because it could not be seamlessly included without disrupting the fight scene, most of which filmed in a single take, during a conversation scene between Wu and Masrani, a line of dialogue in which Wu asks, How long do you think you can control it? 
We won't always be the only ones who can make a dinosaur was cut. An unfilmed scene would have shown the Indominus Rex being startled by an animatronic T-Rex at the park and subsequently tearing the head off of the animatronic animal. Spielberg objected to the scene because he believed it would be disrespectful to Stan Winston for suggesting computer-animated dinosaurs are better than animatronics. Topic Creatures on Screen Jurassic World is the first film in the series without the involvement of Stan Winston, who died in 2008. The animatronic dinosaurs were handled by Winston's former colleagues at Legacy Effects, many of whom worked on the previous three films. Legacy Effects contributed lighting reference models and a practically built animatronic. Visual effects supervisor Phil Tippett and Industrial Light and Magic ILM also returned to create dinosaurs using computer-generated imagery CGI. Image Engine also worked on the film's creatures. Tim Alexander served as visual effects supervisor and Jurassic Park supervisor Dennis Muran provided advice to the ILM crew on matters such as lighting the dinosaurs. The computer generated creatures, including those seen in the park's petting zoo, were created with motion capture using human actors to perform the animals' movements, marking the first time that motion capture technology had been used in the making of a dinosaur film. Trevorrow said, we got to build everyone from the ground up because technology has changed so much that everything is a rebuild. New technology such as subsurface scattering allowed the creature's skin and muscle tissue to be given additional detail that could not be achieved in the earlier films. As with previous films in the series, actors had to imagine many of the film's creatures, which were digitally added during post-production. Actors were aided by cardboard cutouts and tennis balls on sticks, all of which represented the creatures that would later be added into the film. ILM used its V-Scout application, which used an iPad to digitally depict dinosaur models in the filming environment, to further aid the actors. ILM also used the V-Scout during location scouting. Part of the fight scene between the T-Rex and the Indominus was inspired by a video clip that Spielberg shot of his dogs growling and lunging at each other. Early in pre-production, Tippett helped Trevorrow plan and choreograph the battle sequence by having a scale model created for the scene. Previsualizations of the scene were then created to assist in filming it. Tippett also visited the set during production and later discussed the creature animations with ILM. Trevorrow included several creatures he felt had always deserved an in-franchise big scene in the film. He stated, I didn't want to just throw the kitchen sink at it. Each of these movies has done a good job at just very carefully, in a measured way, increasing the new dinosaurs that you see. Several creatures make notable appearances in the film, Indominus Rex, in addition to the DNA of T-Rex, Velociraptor and Cuttlefish. The film's promotional website states that the creature also has the DNA of Carnotaurus, Giganotosaurus, Majungasaurus, and Rugups. Trevorrow said the animal's mixed DNA allowed it to have attributes that no dinosaur was known to have. ILM conducted many animation tests to examine the creature's unique characteristics, which include its long arms, raptor claws and small thumbs, its ability to walk on four legs and push itself up from the ground with its claws, and its ability to throw objects with its claws. Glenn McIntosh, the animation supervisor for ILM, said, We did a bunch of animation tests to explore that. We found that if you overanimated or made it too anthropomorphic and human-like in its movement, it feels it. The goal was to always make sure she felt like a gigantic animal that was a theropod but taking advantage of its extra features. Several fifth-scale maquettes of the Indominus Rex were created for lighting reference. For the film's Velociraptor, Tippett provided animatics and previsualization scenes during pre-production. The creatures were primarily created using motion capture. Image Engine finished the creatures using the motion capture information and a near-final raptor model by ILM. Life-size maquettes of the raptors were also used during scenes in which the creatures are caged. 
For the sequence in which the raptors run through the jungle hunting for the Indominus, Trevorrow was inspired by a quotation from character Robert Muldoon in the first film, in which he stated that the animals were capable of running at the same speed as a cheetah. Macintosh said, We had seen how smart and cunning the raptors could be as hunters but we hadn't seen them as these unbelievably agile and ferociously fast animals in their native jungle environment. Legacy Effects provided one of the full-sized raptor models built for Jurassic Park to the ILM crew to use as a reference. The raptor model weighed approximately 500 pounds, 230 kilograms, and measured approximately 6 feet, 1.8 meters tall and 12 to 14 feet, 3.7 to 4.3 meters long, which helped the animators determine the raptor's locomotion for the hunting scene. The animators determined that an animal of such size probably weighed about 500 pounds, 230 kilograms, as much as a fully grown Bengal tiger. They referenced an ostrich and a tiger to determine on the raptor's movements. Ostrich was chosen because it is the largest existing bird and the fastest two-legged animal alive, Macintosh said the length of the steps and the cadence of the steps informed the animators. Macintosh said tigers were also referenced because of their intense focus while running, where the body moves around the head but the head stays fixed and focused on its prey. The tiger also gave us the power of a predator that sighs charging and weaving through the jungle while on the hunt. For the hunting scene, the raptors' heads were extended forward, giving them a straight, tiger-like, head-to-tail silhouette. Some initial animation tests were created for the hunting sequence about four months before filming. Several individuals of Apatosaurus, including a practically built animatronic that was used for a sequence filmed in Kaui, Hawaii, appear in the film. Because of the cost, Crowley was initially hesitant to have an animatronic created for the film but Trevorrow persuaded him fans of the series would enjoy it. The animatronic consisted of a 7-foot long section of the dinosaur's neck, which was used for a close-up shot depicting the animal's death. ILM used elephants as an example of the animation of the Apatosaurus. Macintosh stated that, There are no existing animals that have such large necks, but in terms of the size and steps they're taking, elephants are an excellent example of that. Also the way their skin jiggles and sags. You also have impact tremors that rise up through their legs as they take steps. Legacy Effects initially created a small model of the creature for use in the film. Spielberg decided a larger model would be better. The original model was scanned into a computer, allowing artists to create a 3D model in the size needed for the film. The film's Tyrannosaurus Rex is intended to be the same individual that appeared in the first film. Trevorrow said, We took the original design and obviously, technology has changed. So, it's going to move a little bit differently, but it'll move differently because it's older. And we're giving her some scars and we're tightening her skin. So, she has that feeling of, like, an older Burt Lancaster. The T-Rex was portrayed using motion capture, and a full-scale T-Rex foot was created for lighting reference and to help with framing shots. According to Trevorrow, the film's Mosasaurus was designed to resemble dinosaurs designed by Winston for the franchise's earlier films. We made sure to give her a look and a kind of personality in the way we designed her face that recalled Stan Winston's designs for many of the other dinosaurs in this world. She looks like a Jurassic Park dinosaur. Dimorphodon appears in Jurassic World, marking its first appearance in the series. Using motion capture, dwarf actor Martin Kleber stood in as a dimorphodon for a scene in which one of the creatures tries to attack Owen. A full-scale head of the creature was also created for the scene. Pteranodon Pachycephalosaurus and Parasaurolophus Ankylosaurus, one of Trevorrow's favorite dinosaurs, is featured in the film. It is one of several creatures he felt was deserving of a substantial scene. Trevorrow noted the death of one of the ankylosaurs as an example of moments in the film.
that are designed to really make these creatures feel like living animals that you can connect to. Especially since so many of the themes in the film involve our relationship with animals on the planet right now, I wanted them to feel real. Stegosaurus and Triceratops appear in the film, for their movements, which include running. ILM studied the movements of rhinos and elephants, and copied their movements when animating the dinosaurs. According to Trevorrow, in certain shots, you're looking at real animals running that just have a dinosaur's skin laid over. A running herd of approximately 60 Gallimimus makes an appearance in Jurassic World. Image Engine created the scene with more than 400 frames consisting of up to 50 layers that include clumps of grass, dirt and dust. Artists for Image Engine often viewed the dinosaur species' appearance in the first film, in which a group of running Gallimimus are also depicted. Jeremy Messiner, animation supervisor for Image Engine, said, We were always going back and staring at that little snippet from the first film. It was always interesting trying to find the feeling of the Gallimimus. Trying to capture the same essence of that original shot was really tricky. Dilophosaurus appeared in the first film and makes a brief appearance in Jurassic World as a hologram in the theme park's visitor center. Music The musical score was composed by Michael Giacchino, who had previously scored the video games Warpath, Jurassic Park and The Lost World, Jurassic Park. John Williams's themes from previous Jurassic Park scores were incorporated by Giacchino, who said, It was a really targeted approach, as to where to include Williams's themes and where would make the most sense and where would we most appreciate it, as fans ourselves. A soundtrack album was released on June 9, 2015, by Backlot Music. Topic. Marketing and promotion The first official pictures of the film set were released on April 23, 2014, and were followed by the release of the first film stills in June 2014. During the San Diego Comic-Con convention in July 2014, 500 copies of a limited edition Jurassic World poster by Mark Englert were given out. Audiences at the convention were disappointed by the lack of Jurassic World footage. What they thought to be footage for the film was a teaser trailer announcement for Legendary Pictures' upcoming film, Skull Island, two viral marketing websites, one for the fictional Masrani Global Corporation and one for the Jurassic World theme park, were launched on November 17, 2014. The Masrani website was created by Jack Anthony Ewens and Timothy Glover, two Jurassic Park fans who had earlier created a website for the fictional Patel Corporation. Khan was initially reported to be playing a park owner with the surname Patel, after some fans mistook the Patel website for an official website associated with the film. Universal hired Ewens and Glover in April 2014 to design the official Masrani website and to add their own backstory details to it. The Masrani website included information that was absent from the film, it contained details of the company's purchase of Ingen and about the park's origins. The Masrani website also included videos showing D'Onofrio and Wong talking in character about the fictional company. Paleontologist Brian Switek was hired in early 2015 to ensure the accuracy of dinosaur information on the film's theme park website. Trevorrow wrote fictional customer comments for the theme park website, he said. It was then that I realized I'd gone too far down the rabbit hole. Closed circuit video shown on the control room monitors was filmed during production and was also added to the theme park website. A short teaser trailer was released online on November 23, 2014. The first full trailer was released online on November 25, 2014. It had initially been scheduled to air on NBC two days later during a Thanksgiving football game. A television advertisement for the film premiered during Super Bowl 49 on February 1, 2015. 
A clip from the film was aired on MTV on April 8, 2015, and depicted the character Owen arguing with Claire about the treatment of the park's dinosaurs. Film director and writer Joss Whedon criticized the clip, calling it 70s era sexist, and, referring to Pratt's and Howard's characters, stated, She's a stiff, he's a life force. Really? Still? Trevorrow later stated he was not bothered by Whedon's comments and that, To be honest, I don't totally disagree with him. I wonder why Universal chose a clip like that, that shows an isolated situation within a movie that has an internal logic. That starts with characters that are almost archetypes, stereotypes that are deconstructed as the story progresses. Howard also considered the clip to be a marketing mistake. Later in April 2015, three new posters for the film were released during a three day period leading up to the premiere of the final trailer. Trevorrow was disappointed with Universal because he felt the trailers showed far more of this movie than I would have ever wanted. Trevorrow stated that because of the film's cost, the trailers included scenes Universal felt were necessary to ensure its financial success after the studio's disappointment with Jurassic Park III's box office performance. Universal spent $34.9 million on television advertisements for the film. Companies including Kellogg's, Dairy Queen and Barbasol served as promotional partners for the film, and Lego and Hasbro released toys based on it. Two video games, Lego Jurassic World and Jurassic World, the game, were released in 2015. Tippett Studio worked with Universal and Efixio to create an application titled, Jurassic World Mobile Movie Maker, which adds images of dinosaurs to a background photograph. <laughs> Topic. Animated films In October 2016, a 24-minute animated children's film titled Lego Jurassic World – The Indominus Escape was released as part of a Jurassic World DVD bundle set, receiving shared billing with the 2015 film. It is the first animated film spin-off from Jurassic Park to be released. The film is a prequel to Jurassic World and features most of the primary adult characters attempting to capture a hot dog-loving Indominus Rex. Its voice cast consists of Zachary Levi, Sendhil Ramamurthy and Fred Tatashiori joined by Jake Johnson, Lauren Lapkus, Bryce Dallas Howard and B.D. Wong, with the individual release of The Indominus Escape, a short film titled Lego Jurassic World, employee safety video was also released, featuring Wong, Johnson and Lapkus reprising their roles from The Indominus Escape. Topic. Release The first premiere of Jurassic World was held on May 29, 2015, at the Grand Rex Cinema in Paris, France. The film was theatrically released in 66 territories from June 10 to 12. In North America, advance screenings were held at Majestic 10 Cinemas in Williston, Vermont on the 10th, before opening two days later in 4,273 venues, the largest ever screen count for Universal. The film was released in Japan on August 5, the last market in which it was released. Worldwide, Jurassic World was released across 809 IMAX theaters—364 of which were in North America making it the third largest worldwide release for any movie in IMAX's history and the largest day and date IMAX release ever. Universal relaunched the film in IMAX 3D in theaters for one week on August 28, 2015, in the United States and Canada. Topic. Home media Jurassic World was released on DVD, Blu-ray, and Blu-ray 3D on October 20, 2015. Upon release, it sold nearly 3 million Blu-ray and DVD units in its first week, making it the highest-selling home entertainment live-action film, both for Universal and of 2015. Across all digital and physical formats, Jurassic World collected $82.6 million in its first week. 
At the end of 2015, it was named the second highest selling video of the year in the UK, selling 1.05 million copies since its release. It was the third highest selling DVD and the second highest selling Blu-ray in the country. Jurassic World is included in the Jurassic Park 4K UHD Blu-ray collection, which was released on May 22, 2018. Topic. Charts The DVD debuted at number one on the UK DVD charts. Topic. Reception Topic. Box office Jurassic World grossed $652.3 million in the United States and Canada, and $1.019 billion in other countries, for a worldwide total of $1.672 billion against a production budget of $150 million. It set a box office record during its opening weekend, becoming the first film to collect over $500 million in a single weekend and was the third highest grossing film of all time in both the US and Canada and the world during its theatrical run. It is the second highest grossing film released in 2015 and the most lucrative in the Jurassic Park franchise. It is the second of three films following Furious 7 and Minions to surpass $1 million in 4DX admissions worldwide. Deadline Hollywood calculated the net profit of the film to be $474 million, when factoring together all expenses and revenues for the film. North America Predictions for the opening of Jurassic World in the U.S. and Canada were continuously revised upwards, starting from $125 million to $200 million. It opened on Friday, June 12, 2015, in 4,274 theaters and earned $81.9 million on its opening day, marking the fifth biggest opening day and the fifth biggest single day gross. The film's Friday gross included $18.5 million from 3,229 theaters in its early Thursday showings, a record for Universal. Excluding Thursday night grosses, the film earned the largest opening day gross, $63.5 million. It also set a single-day IMAX record of $8.6 million and a Saturday and Sunday gross record of $69.6 million and $57.2 million, respectively. In total, it earned $208,806,270 for its debut weekend, setting an opening weekend record and an IMAX opening record of $20.6 million. 10.2% of the total opening gross from 363 IMAX theaters. 3D accounted for 48% of the total opening gross. Real 3D comprised $70 million of the opening gross. It is also the biggest opening for Chris Pratt. The opening weekend audience was evenly split between under 25s over 25s. 39% were under age 25, 61% age 25 years and above. 52% of the audience were male and 48% were female. The film set a record for the largest second weekend gross, its revenue dropping by 49% to $106.6 million and it topped the North American box office for three consecutive weekends. Other records set by the film at the time include the biggest weekend per theater average for a wide release, $48,855 per theater, the fastest film to reach $100 million and each additional $50 million through $600 million, and the largest cumulative gross through every day of release until and including its 53rd day. With the exception of its first day, as of June 21, 2015, screenings in Reeld, IMAX and Premium Large Format had grossed $132 million, $42 million and $23.1 million, respectively. 
On Friday, July 17, 2015, the movie's revenue reached $600 million, becoming the fourth and quickest to do so in 36 days. On Friday, August 28, 2015, the film was relaunched in 350 IMAX theaters, earning $3.1 million during the weekend. By September 5, 2015, IMAX screenings contributed 9% or $56 million of its total revenue. It ended its theatrical run on November 19, 2015, playing for 161 days in theaters and earning $652,270,625, of its total worldwide gross. It became the fourth highest grossing film of all time, the second highest grossing film of 2015, the highest grossing Universal Pictures film, the highest grossing Legendary Pictures film, and the highest grossing film in the Jurassic Park franchise. Box Office Mojo estimates the film sold more than 70 million tickets in the U.S. Topic. Outside North America. Jurassic World was released in 63 countries. Outside the United States and Canada, the film opened on Wednesday, June 10, 2015, in eight countries, earning $24 million. On Thursday, June 11, it grossed another $46 million from 37 markets for a two-day total of $70 million from 45 countries. It was released in 21 more countries on June 12, earning $60 million, which is Universal's highest grossing International Friday of all time, for a three-day total of $130 million from 66 countries. Until Sunday, June 14, it had a five-day opening weekend total of $316.1 million from 66 countries from 19,612 screens, representing 31% of its overseas gross and setting an opening weekend record. This included an IMAX opening record of $23.5 million from 443 IMAX theaters in 56 countries. 3D showings accounted for 65% of the film's revenue equivalent to $205 million. Additional records include the highest single-day IMAX gross with $6.5 million on Saturday, June 12, 2015. Revenues in its second weekend dropped by 47.4% to $166.7 million, according to Box Office Mojo. Deadline.com reported a 48.3% drop to $163.4 million. Jurassic World topped the box office outside of North America for three consecutive weekends. The film had the biggest opening day of all time for Universal in Hong Kong, the second biggest in Australia, France, Indonesia, the Philippines, Russia, and South Korea, and the biggest opening day of all time in Panama. It also scored the biggest opening for Universal in nine countries, including Australia, China, Ecuador, France, Hong Kong, and Malta. In China, it grossed $17.77 million on its opening day, including $1.39 million from midnight runs, which is the tenth biggest of all time and went on to earn $100.1 million in its opening weekend, which is the third biggest of all time. It also scored the second biggest IMAX opening there with $11.8 million. Following China, its largest openings outside of the US and Canada occurred in the UK, Ireland and Malta $30.1 million, France and the Maghreb region $14.7 million, Mexico $14.6 million, South Korea $14.2 million, and Japan $13 million. In South Korea, the film was released during the 2015 MERS outbreak, which resulted in a fall in film attendance from late May 2015. Local film distributors changed or postponed local films' release dates. Because U.S. film studios are debarred from altering their scheduled dates, the film had to be released on its scheduled date. In 25 countries, Jurassic World became the highest grossing film in the Jurassic Park film series. IMAX tickets sales grossed $42.1 million as of June 21, 2015. 
In total earnings, its largest markets outside of the US were China with $228 million, the UK, Ireland and Malta $97.8 million, Japan $69.2 million, South Korea $41.79 million, Mexico $41.73 million, India $24.07 million, and Germany $41.6 million. Topic. Critical response On review aggregation website Rotten Tomatoes, Jurassic World has an approval rating of 72% based on 331 reviews and an average rating of 6.6510. The site's critical consensus reads, Jurassic World can't match the original for sheer inventiveness and impact, but it works in its own right as an entertaining, and visually dazzling, popcorn thriller. On Metacritic, the film has a score of 59 out of 100 based on 49 critics, indicating mixed or average reviews. Audiences polled by Cinemascore gave the film an average grade of A. On an A plus to F scale, Peter Bradshaw of The Guardian gave the film four stars out of five and said it is a terrifically enjoyable and exciting summer spectacular and savvy, funny, ridiculous in just the right way. Robbie Collin of The Telegraph also awarded it four stars, deeming it a worthy sequel to the original Jurassic Park and calling it methodically paced and shot with an awestruck visual sense that's pure Spielberg." Peter Travers of Rolling Stone gave it three stars out of four and wrote, "...it's not the cynical, cash-in-cheesefest you feared. Okay, Jurassic World is a little of that. But this state-of-the-art Dino epic is also more than a blast of rumbling, roaring, did you effing see that, fun." He praised Trevorrow's direction, Pratt's and Howard's performances and the effects. Writing for The Hollywood Reporter, Todd McCarthy criticized the romance between Owen and Claire. He said the film is not terribly scary but praised the CGI and score, and wrote that despite its shortcomings it would be appealing to audiences everywhere. The Associated Press rated the film two stars out of four and called it an ugly, oversaturated movie that lacks the deft sense of wonderment, wit and suspense that guided the original." The review praised the film's score as well as Pratt and Howard's performances. Spielberg said, "...to see Jurassic World come to life is almost like seeing Jurassic Park come true." While Sam Neill also praised the film and its acting. Several news publications, as well as Neil, noted the violence of Zara's death scene, both critically and favorably, with some reviewers expressing concerns about sexism or misogyny in the film's handling of the franchise's first notable depiction of a woman being killed on screen, although Entertainment Weekly wrote, There's nothing amusing about the demise of Zara, who's as close to real people as Jurassic World gets, and it's that unsettling quality about her death that more Hollywood disaster epics need in order to reclaim their visceral emotional prowess. Additionally, several news outlets, including the New York Times, New York and Slate, considered the film's depiction of Claire, including her use of high heels throughout the film, to be sexist. UK film website Movie Metropolis called Jurassic World a tasteful homage to the original but said it lacks some of that film's soul and rated it four stars out of five. Several journalists have noted plot and character similarities between Jurassic World and the 1999 film Deep Blue Sea. Christopher Rosen, senior news director at Entertainment Weekly, tweeted that, Jurassic World is my favorite Deep Blue Sea remake of 2015. Entertainment website Dark Horizons stated in its coverage of Jurassic World that some aren't warming to the Deep Blue Sea meets Jaws 3D storyline. While Entertainment website Flickering Myth posted the story, Deja Vu, isn't Jurassic World just Deep Blue Sea with dinosaurs? Which outlined plot and character similarities between the two films. Pop culture website The Complex stated Jurassic World is basically going to be the big budget, deep blue sea reimagining that we all deserve. 
scientists, driven by a cold near heartless leader, tinkering with already smart animals. The Beast Whisperer who warns against fucking with nature. It's like watching Saffron Burroughs and Thomas Jane flirt all over again. Topic. Accolades In December 2015, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences placed Jurassic World on its short list of potential nominees for the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects at the 88th Academy Awards but was not nominated for an Academy Award. The film received the following nominations and awards from other organizations. Topic. Controversies Topic. Scientific accuracy A Twitter post attributed to Trevorrow stated there would be no feathered dinosaurs in the film. The first Jurassic Park film was lauded by paleontologists for depicting dinosaurs accurately and in keeping with the science of the time but later discoveries have challenged the view of dinosaurs as enormous, slow, lizard-like reptiles. Jurassic World was criticized for purposely ignoring new discoveries and knowledge. Several dinosaur researchers called the film a dumb monster movie. For failing to include new discoveries about the creatures, for example, the feathers or proto-feathers that covered some dinosaurs and the way Velociraptor held its front limbs. Since the film's teaser trailer release, many paleontologists expressed their disappointment on Twitter, Facebook and their own blogs, calling the dinosaurs that were featured a retrograde step from the original Jurassic Park. In response to these criticisms, Trevorrow said. The film is scientifically inaccurate because it is a science fiction movie and not a documentary. The filmmakers had planned to depict feathered dinosaurs early in the film's development. A fictional review on the film's theme park website speculates that the use of amphibian DNA to fill the gaps in the dinosaur DNA, a plot point in the original novel and film, prevented the dinosaurs from growing feathers. Topic. Writing credits dispute At the end of March 2015, a Writers Guild of America WGA, arbitration panel ruled that Rick Jaffer and Amanda Silva would receive credit for writing the screenplay with Trevorrow and Connolly, who disagreed with the decision, although they decided that under WGA rules they had no grounds to appeal. They accepted the ruling on March 31, 2015. On April 2, 2015, it was reported that Universal Pictures originally wanted Trevorrow and Connolly to be credited for the screenplay, they were credited in the film's Super Bowl trailer as the only writers. It was then reported that they appealed the WGA's decision, that they wrote an entirely new screenplay that was not based on Jaffa and Silver's draft, and that they wanted full writing credit for the script. On April 7, 2015, it was reported that the arbiters had unanimously denied Trevorrow's and Connolly's appeal in a second hearing held on April 3, and that they gave Jaffa and Silver an additional credit for writing the original story. Trevorrow and Connolly appealed the decision. Later that day, Trevorrow said he and Connolly had not appealed the WGA's original decision to give Jaffa and Silver co credit for the screenplay, despite disagreeing with it. He also stated that he and Connolly were not informed of the second hearing until it was already over. The credits of the screenplay ultimately went to both writing teams. Jaffa and Silver were also being credited for writing the original story. Topic. Other media Topic. Sequels A sequel to Jurassic World, titled Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, was released in June 2018. Trevorrow and Connolly returned to write the script for the sequel, which features Pratt and Howard reprising their roles. Trevorrow said in 2014, 
We wanted to create something that would be a little bit less arbitrary and episodic, and something that could potentially arc into a series that would feel like a complete story. In May 2015, Trevorrow confirmed he would not direct a sequel, and he acted as an executive producer with Spielberg. J. A. Bioner directed the film, which will serve as the middle chapter of a planned Jurassic World trilogy. Filming took place from February to July 2017. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Animated series. In June 2019, Netflix announced a 3D animated TV series titled Jurassic World – Camp Cretaceous. It will be a co-production between the streaming service and DreamWorks Animation, and is scheduled for a release sometime in 2020. Topic. See also List of films featuring dinosaurs